Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with another episode of the Orphan Block Challenge. Now what we're going to cover today is doing assembly by rows. Now I have sewed and sewed and sewed and sewed and sewed and then sewed some more and I'm getting to the point where I want the Orphan Block Challenge to be done. <laughs> so what I've done is I've cheated. I've gotten a little bit ahead of myself and I'm all ready to show you how to put this together. But first I want to mention to you someone who we have talked to about to you a long time ago. Her name is Jillian and she is at the Carrie Quilt Company. Now her and I did an interview and she's a very talented quilter and she was writing a book and, and it was all these wonderful things that were happening to her and we had a very funny story to share with you over a bar of soap that I won. So <laughs> but I didn't get the soap but we did get a great interview and I hope that you guys will go check her out and see what she's selling. She's got a beautiful online store as well. So you can go check out her, uh, like her web page. So I have got lots to do today. So we're going to go very quickly. We have a Facebook group and that link is in the show notes below as well as, well as the Zoom. So dates that are all listed out. That's in the show notes below. Now on your device, it'll say see more or or something like that see see content and you just scroll down till you get that and you expand those notes and everything's in there every time we do like PDFs or cutting instructions that's where they are so the other thing is we are that Facebook group is making use of those rooms we're having a lovely lovely time sewing in there and I'm trying to get in there more often as I can but life sometimes happens here so anyways I think we're done. Uh, share, like, subscribe, click on that little bell thing to notify you when we're dropping. We normally drop Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but that could change. So come on in. Let's get to some sewing. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine here now, and what I've done is I sorted all my blocks by size, right? Because I figured, okay, that's going to give me a good shot as to how to do these. So I did find a lot of these uh, four and a half by five and a half inch blocks. Now I could have assembled them by like the four and a half, all every all of them going four and a half, or I could have done it all five and a half, right? So it doesn't matter. I decided with this, I had so many of them that were all in that kind of tone or palette that I decided, okay, I will go along and I'll make a, one real long run of this, and then we'll see where we're at. So. Of course, I didn't realize I was going to get this, but anyways, that's fine. This is why I've been sewing forever. So what you're going to do is you're going to assemble your blocks by rows. Now, what you're going to do is make them about 60. You want them to have sashing in between because it gives all your seams a place to good uh, place for your seams to rest. Like you see on the back of here, like nothing is overstressing, you've got some room in between, you're not worrying about your points and all the rest of the stuff. So you want to put sashing in between. Now normally when I'm assembling a quilt I like to do the sashing and then sashing the other way the cornerstone. Well none of there's not going to be anything matching up here, right? So the cornerstones are out of, out of issue, right? So what I did is I took all my rows and I sewed, ugh, oh my goodness, that's heavy. So what I did is I took all my rows and I sewed a strip of sashing along the top. Then I measured them and like I say I wanted them a little bit more this is like 30 right so this is like a 30 inch piece and it's just a little bit over right so that's where you want to be because this has been folded over and creased with an iron. Now I don't know if you can see that crease but it's right there. And that's dead center on that piece, right? And once I started doing my larger blocks, my, I did all my larger blocks first, then I realized, okay, I want to do the same thing here, and I want them to go, you know, like all the way, a little bit longer than 60, but some of them, they needed longer sashing pieces. I just put them on. Now, this piece here is three and a half by whatever this block height is. And like I say, if you've got lots of them that are the same height, you can get away with this. Because basically you're doing that kind of an old-fashioned row by row. 
Remember the, you know, the quilt stores all have this all in Canada. I don't know if they did it in the U.S. But I imagine they did. But everybody had the craze of the row by row. You had to go on a shop hop and you had to go collect the patterns. And then you did all the patterns and then you put them, assembled them by quilts. Well, this is essentially what we're doing here. Right? Okay. So, and your blocks don't have to be all the same width. They can be different widths. Right? As long as they're the right height, that works, right? So this is uh, two blocks that were sewn together, and I decided because they're on bias edges, I didn't want to mess with it, so I just left them sewn together. And this is another one that, you know, I figured, okay, remember these from our, our uh, string blocks, orphan blocks? Well, this is another orphan block that just came out of the blue. I know it's upside down for you, but... You know, this is where we're going to go here. So how we're going to do this. I have pressed in a center point on all of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure it's a little sharper. And I'm going to put these so that this point here matches this point here. Now, none of these are perfectly centered, so that's going to give it a, but it will, it's enough to get it, it's enough to get, make it lie flat. All right, so I'm going to pin my centers together, making sure this part of the center ends up in line, right? So we're all in line this way, because what you're going to do now is you're just going to lay them out and you're going to pat it flat. Don't pull. Whatever you do, don't pull. Right, because what happens is when you start pulling, things start to stretch too much, and you just want them just to be on that line. And the sashing doesn't matter what sashing color sashing you use. I decided to go with a low volume sashing because I thought that would look best in between all these blocks. And I did did manage to finish a couple of quilts this way, so. Um, this is not my favorite way of doing it. Because at the end, once you get your quilt done, you're going to trim off all these edges, right? So let's just get the last block here. Now, so you're going to do the same going the other direction. No stretching. You're just laying down and patting it in place so it lies flat. I know, I am not a big fan of pinning either, but I find I don't have issues if I pin. And I would rather take the time to pin than sit there with a stitch ripper. <laughs> you know, because I got better things to do this afternoon. Oh, but, I mean, we all sit with a stitch ripper occasionally, so it's all good. There we go, and... And this works perfect because some of your blocks here are square and some of them are rectangle, right? So, yeah, you just put this and you line it up the best you can. Don't line up, don't worry about these edges lining up at all because you're trimming after. You want this edge to line up. Okay, so now I'm going to hope I've got enough in my bobbin. Because, <laughs> yeah. And, you're, and for me... I make my quilts, my twin quilts, uh, I make them 60 by 60 by um, 60 by 84, or 5 feet by 7 feet. I, I think that works well, and I use, and it's a little big maybe for the twins, but you know, uh, an adult could use this quilt too as a twin quilt. So, you know, you never know who it's going to go to. It might end up with some kid going to you know, going off to work somewhere in a camp and he might need a nice quilt or who knows, you know, if you give it to a child, these kids, these kids are actually getting these quilts and they might, uh, yeah, they will. So let's open. Yeah, so you never know what, where, how long these quilts gonna last. So it could be giving it to a child today. Well, you know, ten years from now, they're you know a young teen, and then 
they're an adult, right? So, and I just let that. Now I don't want that to fall and pull because it will create drag. And that's not what you want. You, you know, this is like I say, this is not my best, my favorite method, but I thought, well, I better show it to you because you're all going to be wondering how to do a row by row. Like I, or uh, assembly by row. Now, all these, these little four and a half by five and a half inch blocks, or the four and a half inch blocks, I'm, um, that roll, that big roll I showed you, um, we're going to try and, try and get that used up, so it might appear until it's all gone, <laughs> it might appear until it's gone, there's a very sad story about, that comes along with those blocks, and all I'm going to say on that story is I'm sure, oh, it's dragging again, I'm sure my, um, my nephew, my great nephew, uh, would be so happy if they knew, if he knew they were going to a sick child or, you know, a child that was in need, and he's probably thrilled with going to charity, so. Okay, there we go. Now. There. So, this is what it looks like now, right? So these blocks, see, there's no possibility of cornerstones. Okay? Now, I'm going to keep doing this as the pieces get larger. I've already got some that are already pre-sewn a little bit bigger. So this here, right here, because I can see where that center mark is, I would start pinning from there on the next row. Now, I, as this gets bigger and bigger, it's going to get heavier and heavier. So make sure you don't have drag from here, from this side of your machine, or pull from this side of your machine, because you'll make your quilt very warped. Okay, so I'll just get the next row on. I'll show you what we do. I'll just pick it up from over here. Oof. <laughs> See, now this is a perfect example of not worrying about them matching because this is how the rows worked out. So I just will trim that off and I will take whatever is here and make it into more, you know, sashing for other projects or however this works out. Now, I want these rows to be in the middle. So, I'm just going to put, I'm going to match up this center first. And that center line, I can see this seam, uh, this dent really well. I don't know if you can, but I can. So now, I want that to be, come on, there we go. And I'm going to put a pin in, like, you know, every bit here, you know, just to make sure that I've got good coverage. This is such, in a way, this is a really easy way of building a quilt. And in another way, it's, it's time consuming. But, I mean, it's, you know, if you've got lots of orphan blocks, you don't know what to do with them. This, this is the way, you know, you got to do something with them, right? I even found some Scotty dogs. I don't know if you can see that there's Scotty dogs from this side. Well, I'll try and show them to you from the other side. Okay, there we go. Just want it to lie straight. There. Okay, now we get the other side pinned and we run it under. Okay. Now we would continue to do this until it's 84 inches, right? And like I say, don't pull. Pulling is bad. <laughs> Pulling is bad. As I'm going through these, I'm sitting there like, I have a friend's orphan blocks as well as my own. That, um, and I'm not sure if she made them all or if she had them, got them from the guild or what she, how she did this, but 
there's different ways of doing these. Okay, so here we go. Now, I'm going to make sure that lines up as best I can. Okay. And if the seam is open, leave it open. If it's going tilting one direction or the other, make sure it stays that way. Okay, because that way your quilt will lie flattest. And it goes off the edge. Okay. <sighs> and all the seams go towards the sashing lines, right? So, okay. Yeah, it takes, this is a rectangular block. I don't know much, I don't know anything about it, but it kind of was, uh, basically it's a rails block, a baby rails block that's been boarded with a wide seam. Very cute. Very, very cute. That one is not mine, but... I meant, oh, there it's all there. I hope you guys, you were looking for some of these. What am I going to do with them? Hope you're, you uh, kind of like are watching to see which, <laughs> which block is going in to these quilts. Like I say, my I'm going to talk to my husband about putting a slideshow together for all the quilts that were donated to charities because some of these were... Some of these were beautiful when I ended up with them. When I finished with them, I thought they were pretty cool. And the gills were very happy to get them. Okay, there we go. keep doing this until I get a quilt that's about about 84 inches long. Now what as I'm going through here I've got a bunch of stuff that's already sewn so what I will do is I'll keep motoring through and then you can see you know how quickly these will come together and there's our Scotty dogs for the people that love little Scotty dogs. So I'll be back at the end for our big to down moment. Okay, so here is the quilt finished. Now, let's see, make sure I've got this. Now, this, I mean, I used a bunch of different low volumes in, in this, and I just went by row, just row by row. I just kept building this along. I got some big squares in there. I got little squares. I got Scotty dogs and hearts and you name it. There's a whole bunch of things now. I needed a little bit extra more uh, So I did add two thinner rows at the bottom, but that's okay. That worked now. I also <sighs> Tried to do these this way Where they're all the same size and do them across and now this is the five and a half inch across and Okay, they're all, some of them are the directional blocks, but this is basically done by rows, right? So you put one row together, and I didn't use any cornerstones in between, right? Because some of these blocks were, they were pieced well, but they were kind of all over the place. So there's a lot of little pieceing in here, and, uh, you know, all of this. These block, these quilts are going for charity, so, and... The next one, I know, they're like, good grief, 
know which way is the bottom, which way is the top. Oh, this is the top. Okay, got it. This is the top. These blocks all have a similar theme and palette, so I thought, well, they'll look good together in a quilt. So, yeah, we are kind of like sewing the like blocks together. But I have hundreds of these. And I have more to come. So that's one, two, three. Now, I don't know if I showed you this one before, so I'll show it to you very quickly. This is baby quilt size, and that's just black and white. And that's a leader ender project that I did a while ago. And this is what it looks like on the back, right? So the, the seams are all swirled and open. This thing lays absolutely flat. I have not ironed it. So there's a video on how to do this. And here's another quilt that is basically sewing together a bunch of like blocks that are like this, right? Now we're still doing orphan blocks. Now if you had enough orphan blocks to lay out, you know, let's say, maybe there's an umbrella and all this stuff in here too, right? Right? Ooh, wrong side. Wrong side there. So if you had enough of these, you know, like that were in cool tones or warm tones, you could s sort them out that way too. I did not. I had, at first I did, and then after that I didn't. Now this is fabric that my husband bought. He was going to surprise me with some new fabric. What a sweetie. And I made a, I added some more fabric and it's a twin size quilt. Now this is just random squares that I got and I thought, well, this is kind of cute. There's some fun stuff in here. There's Snoopy in here too every once in a while. And just, uh, you know, just all fun, fun kind of stuff. Here's my Snoopy. There's Snoopy right there. So I think that'll that'll be fun for fun for a little one. So as you can see too, I have a bit more of sewing to do, but I wanted you guys to see how this went through. And this is just doing it by rows. Now, with the one I did today, I put it onto a cutting board, lined up my centers. Because I have all the centers were pressed, so I have a line all the way down the center. So I lined up my centers and just trimmed this, right? It's a little bit longer than, or wider than 60, but that's okay. That's okay. So I just trimmed it along and it looked, and it looks fine, you know? So it, it just goes all the way down. It's all good. So that's, that's it. I didn't want to drag all the camera equipment and the ruler and all this stuff into the dining room where I had laid it out, but you kind of get the idea. And some of them were trimmed pretty close to the edge, but that's okay. That, that's fine. That'll, that'll get taken up and worried about when we're doing the quilting. So anyways, I hope you have fun with this idea. If this helps you, just line up all the blocks the same size. And all the blocks were trimmed to the correct height, not necessarily a, a standard width, because you see there's a bunch of blocks in here that are different widths and all the rest of the stuff like this one here. So all it has to be is the same height, roll it across, put like bigger sashing on the end, make it 60 plus, but not too much plus, and then kind of work trying, and then you can just trim it off. What I trimmed off, was um, basically stuff that was strings. I didn't have anything that I could make more sashing out of. So I hope you have an amazing week ahead. You take care and we'll talk to you next time. See ya, take care, bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for all of the amazing people that we have met along this crazy YouTube adventure that we've been having. Uh, we do free speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a guild and they're looking for, you know, people to talk and, you know, and chat with, you know, in their uh, monthly meetings, tell them that I'm doing free ones just to help the guilds out because it's been a tough time for the guilds as well. You know, share, like, and subscribe with your friends, you know, make sure that they're you know, they, they, they get the word out on us. That's, I mean, that's the best way you can do to help us out. So until we meet again, I want to thank you. Okay. Goodbye.